Welcome back to Basics of Rigging. I'm CT Silt, and I'm about to show you how to begin your first rig setup. Um, remember that this, our primarily goal is not to animate the scene, but to make sure that an animator can come in and animate it. If this thing actually had multiple controls, such as, uh, you know, pulleys and systems, the animator would be able to need to offset things and make things more lifelike and realistic. Uh, us being a technical director, if we were actually given this assignment ourselves, which uh, you saw my, my animation in the previous video, then you'll notice that just rotating a circle, I wouldn't even need to do all of this. I could just, you know, just animate it my, by myself, because that's a simple project. But for the purposes of what we're trying to achieve here, I'm going to demonstrate how to rig it. So first what I'm going to do is I need a control. And I'm going to go to the NURBS primitives and create a circle. I'm going to drag it on the grid, and it's going to be really small. Okay, so now I have my circle. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it 90 degrees. Now I'm going to move it into position. So here we go. I want it roughly around here. You typically want to create these controls so that the animator knows roughly what they're going to be doing. So circles typically means rotating or sometimes it can be like moving back and forth but most of the times they use squares for that. Okay, now that I have my circle in place I want you to notice that over here on the channel box I have these multiple numbers with random yucky numbers. They're all decimals and percentage and whatnot. Uh, for our animator to be able to work in this would be just dreadful. They want to have a set default, typically zero, to be as a home position. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to name my controller. I'm going to call it, I'll just call it controller. So there we go, I have control. And I'm going to just select one of the attributes, it doesn't matter what. I'm going to right click and go to freeze and then all. So what this does is it completely starts out of a new slate. So when I rotate this, the animator can just press zero and go back to the exact same position it was at. So now I don't have any of that translate stuff. All right. Now what I'm going to introduce to you is called the connection editor. Basically it is the it combines two things and make typically it's roughly the same general attribute. So like for this example, I'll be rotating along that looks like the Z and I want this piece which is actually grouped. It's called main axle and I want it to rotate around Z. Now if you'll notice my group uh, attribute is actually over here. So I need to move my, I meant to say pivot point, my pivot point is actually over here. So I'm going to move the pivot point to a location and which is more suitable for it to rotate. This is going to be rotating around in this direction. So I need to roughly get the pivot point in a better position. So I'm going to go to the wireframe mode and I'm going to Put it right there next to this, the cylinder here. There we go. So now when I rotate it, it's going to rotate around the cylinder, kind of like so. Okay, now back to the connection editor. I'll pull it up real fast. It's under Window, General Editors, Connection Editor. All right, so what I'm going to have here, and I always, I never click this button. I've, you need to make sure it says from to to. I, and just never really click it unless you, you, you know, you're more experienced, you know what you're doing. But basically, this side is what influences this side. It's kind of like the child parent P thing. So, um, I need to make sure my group is selected, which it is. So I'm going to click reload left, and all the attributes that can be for that group is listed in the left. Now I'll just move this out of the way. I know you can't see it, but now I'm going to click the controller over here and I'm going to move the window and click reload right. So now here's all the controllers. Uh, I mean all the attributes for the controller. So if I want 
to rotate in this direction and I want it to rotate that group I'm actually going to combine the two rotates. Now I've deliberately selected the reload left and reload right in the wrong order in order to demonstrate what would happen. So for the main axle I'm going to click rotate and for the control I have to click the equivalent number of output inputs. In this case rotate is considered an XYZ so there's three outputs. So the inputs for the controller has to be three and in which case it's rotate. So now if I try to rotate this nothing's going to happen. But if I come over here to the main axle and I rotate it you can't really see it but it's rotating my uh, cylinder. You can see over here. So what I've done is I've made a misconnection. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the controller, reload left, and then I'm going to come over here to the group, click reload right, and you'll see up at the top controller and main axle. So that's how you know which one's which. I'm go down to the bottom, click rotate again, and then click rotate. All right. Occasionally you get this warning, typically it doesn't mean much. Just saying it might not expect might not calculate as expected. But anyway, if I rotate uh, this controller here, uh, is that the right way? It's not rotating. See this right here, this yellow right here indicates the connection editor. Uh, this means that there's a connection. Um, but the controller has the yellow connection, whereas the main axle has the yellow connection too. This shouldn't exist for the controller itself. That should be completely white. So that tells me there's something wrong. So I'm going to just right click this and break the connections. And I'll no longer have that influence. So now I'm going to rotate this. And you'll notice that this um, is now rotating. So what I suspect happened just then is that when I connected the main axle to the control, the main, I forgot to uh, break that connection. So I basically had a controller connected to the main axle and the main axle connected to the controller. So if I tried to rotate them both, they wouldn't rotate. But anyway, now that that's fixed, as you can see, I can rotate this all the way around and it can get back to the starting point. So for the most part, I'll leave this at zero. Now I can set limits on these kind of things, but for the general part, most part, I don't need to create a limit. What I do need to create is to make sure that the animator doesn't mess with this controller. So if I come over here and I want to, you know, let's just say the animator, and animators do do this, um, they accidentally choose the move and then they move the controller and then they're like, oh crap. Well, <laughs> the controller is still going to work on the rotate, but now the controller's moved. So what we try to do is we try to prevent that. Uh, I don't want the controller to move ever, only the rotate. So I'm going to select the translates over here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to do lock and hide selected. So basically it just disappears. They can't move it so if I go back to the I press move, now I can't even grab it. You'll notice that the, um, the manipulator is gray. I don't want them to be able to scale it so right click Live and hawk selected, but I do want them to have the visibility turned on, be able to turn, you know, so they can turn it on and off just in case, you know, they they don't want to. There's so many controllers that they just want to focus on one thing, you know. So since the I only rotated around Z, I don't need to rotate X and Y, so I'll lock and hide those. So um, what happens is is now I have this nice little clean thing. It basically tells the animator. If it's not here, don't touch it. So if you ever need to get that back for whatever reason, you can click edit and go to channel control. And you'll have every attribute that you can think of as listed under this area. Um, first of all, there's two tabs. There's keyable and locked. The keyable is obviously the ones that the animator can have. However, um, the non-keyable is displayed here, or non-keyable hitting. So if, let's just say the translate X, I click this button here to move it back over to this side. And you'll notice that this is locked. 
So the lock tab will actually say what is all locked. And you can you would have to unlock it here, or you can just unlock it individually by right clicking and go to unlock selected. Alright, well I'm about out of time, so I'll continue this on another video. Thank you.